Silver and gold, silver and gold, everything glitters with silver. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rajiv, and today we are talking about silver. Anybody who has developed a collection of something that has lasted multiple years, that has grown with the years, knows that it started somewhere. And most people can actually pinpoint exactly where it started. I know where my silver collecting started. It started one afternoon on Young Street in Toronto at a little antique shop that is no longer there, run by a woman named Katrina. She had a bunch of wonderful things and in the case, right by the cash register, there was all this silver. So I asked her about it and she pulled out this fork right here. And she said that it was made in Dublin in about 1790 or 1800. And she showed me the marks on the back. And this was my first introduction to silver. I took my birthday money and went back to the shop many months later and bought this fork from Dublin. And I started collecting piece by piece, putting it into a box and putting it under my bed for the one day I will move out. And when I move out and have my own kitchen, I want all silver cutlery in the drawer. So today I would like my addiction to become your addiction. Silver is a wonderful thing to collect because it has two values. It has its intrinsic value. It is a precious metal. So this fork, which is solid silver, is worth something just for the silver alone. There have been instances where I have had to pay the rent and uh, I had jobs fall through and I have taken pieces of silver to antique stores and sold them for money to pay the rent. And you can do that if it's solid silver but it also has a historic value. This fork, which is over 200 years old, has heard so many conversations at a dinner table. It has been bought, it has been sold multiple times, and that historical value is something that gets pulled out of the drawer and put onto a dinner table. So when my friends are over and they're sitting and they, they're paying no attention to the silverware, I'm looking around and I'm thinking of what the silver is now experiencing with my life. And when I'm gone, this silver is gonna have another life. It's gonna belong to somebody else and they're gonna value it in their own way. Silver that was made in England, and all of this is English silver, it was England, Ireland, Scotland. All of that silver was marked and it was hallmarked. There was a system that started in the 1300s. The, the office in London, um, the Hallmark office, it was the Goldsmiths Hall that was given a, a warrant by the monarchy to start stamping silver. That goes back to 1327. That's when they started the standard of taking in silver that was made by silversmiths, testing them to make sure that they were pure silver, and then stamping those pieces to ensure that someone buying it knew that it was the real thing. So those marks are still on all of these pieces of silver and they tell us so much. They tell us the year it was made. They tell us the city in which it was hallmarked. They tell us that there was a tax or a duty that was paid on it and who made the piece of silver. So it often has a stamp that's the silversmith's initials. So you want to learn about this stuff? Get a little book. There are lots of little Hallmark books that are filled with all of the information that you need to be able to learn about what you're looking for. And I've had this book since I started collecting silver and I take it with me when I'm going to antique fairs. Um, just in case I see a mark that I don't recognize, I could look it up here. Um, so, there are mainly two different types of silver that you can collect. There's solid sterling silver, which is what all of this is, which means that this whole spoon is made of silver. It's made of 
925 parts out of a thousand of pure silver. If this was 100% silver, if it was a thousand parts out of a thousand parts silver, it would just be too soft. So 925, 950 parts out of a thousand of silver is what makes up what we regard today as sterling silver. So you can collect sterling silver, solid silver, or you can collect silver plate. And silver plate means that the base metal, the, the majority of the spoon is something else. It's like a copper alloy. And then it's been electroplated or it's been dipped in silver. There's a very big difference in value between silver plate and sterling silver. Because there's only a thin coat of silver on something that's plated, it's very often worn off in places and you can see the base metal underneath. The base metal underneath is sometimes corroding. So very, very big difference. So you decide what it is you'd like to collect or if you're lucky enough to inherit silver from a grandparent or a parent, then this information might be valuable to you you may see your inheritance as something that is very special. Silver is very special. Silver is antimicrobial, so bacteria doesn't grow on this. But it also, what I love about it is it feels very nice in your hands. It has a weight to it. The craftsmen that made this stuff, they designed forks and spoons and knives to be held in your hand in a in a way where everything felt very balanced. It also has a wonderful sound, so that. That's the sound of silver. So plate would not sound like that. Stainless steel makes no beautiful ringing. It makes a clunk. Silver tarnishes, and silver tarnishing is what deters most people from collecting it. Oh, it tarnishes, I don't wanna to have to polish that stuff. That's what I hear over and over and over again. People think that if you have silver, you're gonna be sitting at a table polishing it every week because that's what you're gonna to need to do. That is wrong. If you have silver and you use it just for Thanksgiving and then you put it away for the whole year, it is going to tarnish. But if you have silver and you use it every single day, Touching it, handling it, putting it in the sink, washing it, actually prevents a tarnish from building up. Just use this shit. Just use it and enjoy it. Take care of it to the extent that is comfortable and enjoyable. And as, it's, as soon as it stops being fun, then draw the line and calm down, okay? <laughs> it's just stuff. But when silver develops a tarnish, it's because there's sulfur or hydrogen sulfide or ammonia in the atmosphere that's reacting with the silver. And that's actually fusing with the silver and creating a coating on the surface of the silver that you then need to remove. And if it's heavily tarnished and you're using a polish to take off the heavy tarnish, you're actually taking off a layer of silver. You're taking off what has chemically become silver sulfide. And when you do that over and over and over, you're wearing down layers of the silver. So something like this spoon over here that had an engraving that was once very crisp and sharp has now become very worn down from years and years and years of polishing. This one is almost completely gone. So. They, they say that you should avoid polishing silver with silver polish unless you absolutely have to. You can clean silver if it's not heavily tarnished, like if it looks like this or like this and it just needs a little bit of a shine, you can use other things. You can use all natural glass cleaner. You just spray a little bit on a piece of cotton or on a rag and you use that to just take away the surface dirt that will become tarnish and to make it shiny again. And that glass cleaner is not abrasive. It's not as harsh as silver polish. 
all commercial silver polish that's on the market today is abrasive. Baking soda, you'll hear that baking soda is a great polish. No, it is not. It is actually one of the most abrasive things that you could possibly use on antique silver. Never, ever, ever use baking soda on old silver. So there we go. And then this would be washed in the sink. It would be washed with soap and water thoroughly and then dried completely because you want to dry it as soon as you've washed it off to make sure that no water marks appear on it. So there we go. That just required a little bit of a, a clean to come back to a nice shine. You can also use hand sanitizer, a little bit of hand sanitizer, aloe-free hand sanitizer. If the piece is very lightly tarnished, like this spoon right here, and same thing. So when I'm doing this, I just take out all the silver and I put on a TV show or some music and I sit by the window and you just kind of get lost in it. So what will happen to a piece of polished silver as it starts to tarnish, it develops like a film and you can feel it on the silver. It, it, it's not smooth. It, there's a little bit of resistance. That's the first step of tarnish. And then it turns slightly yellow, very slightly yellow, almost indiscernible to someone that is not familiar with silver. Like the inside of this ladle, that's that first sign of it turning slightly yellow. It's not white anymore like this. You see the color difference? That's the beginning of tarnish. And then, when sulfur starts to attack the silver, it changes color and it turns into this and it becomes dark and dull. Now, there's also sulfur in foods like peas and eggs have sulfur. So if you have eggs with your silver fork, they'll immediately change color and they'll not only turn like dark, but they'll start to become metallic blue like the tines of this fork. That's something that came in contact with eggs. That requires actual silver polish. So, hand sanitizer. Very, very mild way of cleaning. Lightly, lightly tarnished silver. And then the next level up would really be silver polish. What I like to use is a very mild paste. It comes with its own sponge in the, in the little tub. Don't use this sponge. It's not the best sponge for polishing silver. You should use a cellulose sponge like this. So I'm gonna put my gloves on. You should wear gloves, or I wear gloves. You can do what you'd like. I don't wanna go shooting all over the place. Shooting. You should, you should, you should, you should do this, you should do this. That's what Laura, Laura says. People shouldn't go shooting all over the place. But I guess that's shooting. Okay, this sponge is a little big, so I'm gonna cut it to make it a little more manageable. You can cut a sponge, you know. You don't have to use it in the size that it was sold to you. So, polishing with actual silver polish. I like to use this stuff because it is the mildest of the silver polishes out there. You only need a very little bit. You want the sponge to be slightly damp. You pick up a bit of the paste well, I don't have anything here that's severely, severely tarnished because I use it all, but this spoon, have a good look at this handle. It's fairly tarnished. And I'm gonna take this paste and just rub it on with the sponge and you'll see instantly that that silver sulfide, which is the coating of tarnish, that's coming off. Now, I will also remind you that this is a bit of the silver coming off and this is that spoon with hardly any engraving left so I am further taking away from this old engraving that's on here. This is not good. It's not good for the silver to be polishing it like this and abrading it. Okay, so a lot has come off on here. Rinse it off, let it dry a little bit and then you go to your trusty rag bag. How many of you have rag bags at home? I have a rag bag. Nice soft remnant of a t-shirt. And then you buff this. So even more of that tarnish is coming off at this stage. And this is the actual shining stage. 
I'm wearing gloves right now partially to eliminate any fingerprints or grease from going back onto the spoon that I've polished. There, look at, look at what came off, even after rinsing it off. And then this gets put into the pile of all the pieces that I've polished. And at the very end, I would take everything to the sink and wash it all off in soapy water and dry it all really, really well and put it in the drawer. Look at the difference between this polished spoon and this spoon that has not been polished. You can see the difference in color. And if it's plate, just know that if it's silver plate and you use something very abrasive on it, you can take off that silver plate and you'll expose the metal underneath. You'll damage it beyond repair. So use these methods uh, to begin with and hopefully you'll be able to achieve a nice, beautiful shine like this. Okay, now I'm just gonna get to it and continue polishing all of this. So if you have a very ornate piece of silver and there are areas that your cloth won't get into, you need to use some kind of brush to put the polish in there and clean it out. And this is very important. If you use the wrong type of brush, you can actually really scratch the silver. So don't use a nylon synthetic toothbrush. That will scratch the silver. You want a natural haired brush. This is actually a horsehair brush. It's used for flux, like for welding, for putting on flux. It's just made of little horsehair um, bits. It's cheap. And this is the kind of brush that you would use just pick up a little bit of polish and again I don't have anything very ornate here but just to show you I would like this little bit in here you just would rub it like this with the brush to get into the crevices and then you can rinse it off with the brush as well and then take your cloth and buff it to a shine so silver was not just made into cutlery, it was made into all kinds of things. Necklaces, jewelry, uh, ink wells, and this thing, which is one of my favorite possessions. I only have one umbrella that I own. It is this umbrella. It is from a wonderful shop in London called James H. Smith & Sons Umbrella and Sticks. And this shop, I think it goes back to the 1830s and it's still in its original location. Beautiful hand-painted lettering in the glass window fronts. They make everything in the shop. And because the shop is almost 200 years old, in their basement they have parts. They have parts of umbrellas and walking sticks that are over 100 years old. And every now and then they pull some of those parts and they build a new walking stick or a new umbrella using old parts. So when I was there, I got this, which is this little umbrella. It has a little case. What I loved about it when I saw it was that the handle is rosewood and it's capped in silver. This is actually like a walking stick cap, but they put it on an umbrella. And this thing tarnishes. It tarnishes because it's just in the sulfuric living room. <laughs> That's where it lives. So when you're polishing something like this, where there's silver and there's wood, it's a very good idea to protect the wood a little bit. The way you protect the wood is by applying a layer of paste wax. I just use my, my paste wax that I use for furniture. And I just get a little bit of this and put it right on the wood near where the silver is and set that aside for five minutes or so and let it dry. Do you see how the wax is now opaque? That means it's dry. So once it's dry, you can take a little bit of the polish, just a wee bit, you don't need very much, just a little bit. And then I'm just avoiding the wood as much as I can, but I do know that because of that wax, the wood is semi-protected. And once all that tarnish has been removed, just clean this off with some water. Finally, I'll take a cotton cloth and I will buff this part first, dry it off, buff it to a shine, 
and then I'll take the cloth, find a clean spot, and I will clean off the wax from the handle. And the wax, because it's made for wood, actually polishes the handle as well. There, look at that. The umbrella is happy again. Look at how nice that looks. All polished and clean. There you have it. Silver polishing. So, I encourage you, if you have even the slightest inkling, to maybe look for one or two pieces of silver out there in the world, bring them home, shine them up, use them, and just see if you'll get bitten by the silver bug. Maybe it'll become a thing for you too. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, it's okay, it's fine. But please subscribe for more videos just like this one.